Last month, the Taggart family of Cedar Mill, Oregon, set off a firestorm of controversy after petitioning the state for the right to end the life of their 13-year-old brain-dead daughter. Jean Ann Wharton takes us beyond the facts. Caitlin Taggart was a beautiful, lively girl who loved laughing and playing outside. But all that changed at the age of 12. Caitlin slipped into a persistent vegetative state, confining her almost entirely to her bed and Facebook. She doesn't even have basic motor functions anymore. We literally have to drag her to the car to drive her to school in the morning. She's totally unresponsive when we talk to her. Her eyes just roll back in her head. Caitlin, honey, it's your dad. With no hope that their daughter would ever recover, the Taggarts decided to seek legal permission to end Caitlin's life. It is the most difficult decision we've ever had to make, but we just keep reminding ourselves that the real Caitlin is already gone. That's just her body texting. But the Taggarts soon found themselves at the center of a heated controversy as euthanasia opposition groups mobilized to stop them. These protesters say the groans and exasperated sighs Caitlin sometimes makes prove there is hope for recovery. But the Taggart's physician, Dr. Kevin DeBacker, disagrees. Ew. The sounds and movements that Caitlin makes are caused by random synapses firing in what's left of her brain tissue as a response to atmospheric changes, like it being cold in a restaurant or her mother bursting into a room, even though there is a little thing called privacy. Dr. DeBacker believes euthanasia is a humane way to end Caitlin's suffering. We give her one painless injection and that's it. Her eyes may flutter a bit, or she may murmur, are you for real killing me right now? But then her struggle will finally be over. Back at the Taggart home, the family is already preparing for life without Caitlin. It's hard, but we know we're making the right decision. Her organs can help other children. We can give her eyes to someone who would actually use them to read a book. I have cramps. And I don't even... What would you tell other parents? I want parents out there to go home tonight and hug their kids and be thankful they don't have such a piss-poor attitude. For Beyond the Facts, I'm Jean Ann Wharton. Three days ago, Caitlin's life was legally ended. Caitlin, by the way, was the first Oregon resident to undergo the procedure since 2009 when a dentist had his receptionist euthanized after she was unable to perform any function other than eating all the candy in the waiting room. A recent study from the Centers for Disease Control finds that over 100 million children are being exposed to harmful levels of stupidity in their own homes. Hear the debate about secondhand ignorance on the next In the Know.